Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is Inertia by New Systems Instruments. So Inertia is the third module from New Systems Instruments that I'm featuring in my videos. I've done a full video on the HSO, the harmonic shift oscillator, as well as a full video on Babel, which, well, let's describe that as a complex logic module. And I was extremely impressed by both of them, but I'm really blown away by inertia. And I think that the best way to explain that a bit is, well, we all know, well, uh, complex function generators like maths or the Befacle Rampage or uh, maybe even the DUSG by Surge. And those have, of course, become a staple uh, within Eurorack or modular, whatever you want to uh, want to use. And what I feel sets inertia apart is it's, well, you might say a physical approach to it, but I might want to say a more um, classical mechanical approach to it, or maybe even a Newtonian way of handling that as well, because it's a very physics interested and well driven module. So that being said, I don't want to keep you waiting. I would just say, well, I uh, hope you're sitting down because uh, here we go. Inertia by New Systems Instruments. Um, I'm always intrigued anytime anything within Eurorack references a physical phenomenon or if it, if it, if it, if it references quantum mechanics, quantum physics, uh, high energy particle physics, uh, astrophysics, you name it. I used to study physics and astrophysics in university a long, long time ago. And it's still one of my, well, my my key interests, and I truly love that. So when I heard that, well, New Systems Instruments was introducing the inertia, I immediately <laughs> wanted to get my hands on it. So I'm, I'm truly happy that New Systems Instruments made this module available to me to uh, to test with, because it's um, it's a great little thing. It's 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 so extremely versatile and it's and it's not like any of the other slew limiters you might have seen it's not like your regular function generator no this is a um, this is a beast of its own so what I want to do is just want to quickly run through the actual user interface and then we're just gonna dive right in with some scopes and we're just gonna figure out how this thing works and how you can use it uh, but keep in mind I'm not gonna do a full run through of all its applications because then I would still be here in 20 hours and um, you guys at home will need to wade through 20 hours of me just rambling on about this module which might be a good thing so I still might do that uh, but this is meant as a quick introduction to the inertia so let's dive in shall we so first things first so you're gonna see that we have a switch here for the interface what that actually does, it switches between the two modes that you have on these four parameters right here. So these are, of course, the, 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 the stars of today's show uh, because these are the ones that are doing the actual heavy lifting. So in red mode, this one will influence the, well, the rise slew, you might say, and this one, the fall slew, you might say, and the same thing is true for the two knobs here in momentum. So this will do the rise slew of momentum and this will do the fall slew of momentum. So again, what that all means, we're gonna get into that. But keep in mind that every time we talk about these things, try to visualize a, um, a, a physical experiment, a physics experiment, uh, you might say, where you might have your um, your CV or your um, or your wave being an actual well body of some sorts, whether you visualize that as a small weight moving up and down, anything like that. But think about things like force and momentum and those kind of things. And why that is is of course because inertia is of course something that was referenced in I believe it was Newton's first law where it says that inertia is essentially the property of an object, of a body. That's typically what they call that in, in physics. And that property is the resistance against 
any change in speed of that of that body so whether i'm at rest and something's try, trying to get me in motion that resistance to that that's called inertia but also if i'm already moving as a, at a constant speed if i want to well either well uh, slow myself down or if i want to accelerate that resistance to to that that's also inertia and if you then translate that to things like momentum where momentum is of course the well the, the quantized expression of inertia where you might say that momentum is of course the the mass of that object of that body um, uh, of course well, the product of the the mass and its speed and if you then take inertia and you translate that to to momentum then you say that momentum is always conserved so that's always a constant and that's of course interesting if you say well, okay well we've got a wave shape that's essentially moving up and down okay that's something that we can uh, that we can all visualize and if we then say well we have something of zero mass so with with zero momentum and that is just moving up and down that's immediately responding to the force that's exerted on it but if we then add some momentum or some mass to it you will see that it's dragging along or overshooting certain times as well so that's something that i, that I found truly intriguing so let's well i need to stop talking about this and just show you because i think that that's gonna <laughs> clear things up uh, pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get uh, PAMS here. I'm just going to reduce that to something like 60 BPM. There you go. And I'm just going to grab some gates. So we have several inputs on this on this on this on this module. So uh, I said well we have the switch here for switching between uh, red and blue. Uh, we've got the range selector and i'm going to talk about the actual parameters there even more later on but then you've got three inputs one is for in so that's essentially where you put in things like gates uh, any other functions or uh, or audio and here you've got a trigger input that you can use so that's something that is of course quite resembling of other function generators like for instance maths um, I think the Rampage has that as well, uh, but also the uh, DUSG by Surge that has both an in and a trigger. And the funny thing then becomes is we also have a Volt Per Octave in. So that already, well, solves the surprise um, that you can also use this as an oscillator itself. And then you've got two outputs, your first order output and your second order output most important thing to understand is of course that the second order output will um will be smoother much smoother than the first output and then of course you had as i said the stars of today's show and that is, that are these four parameters so in red mode you might say you have slew for um uh, for the rise for the fall of the rate and then you've got your uh, rise and your fall for the momentum in blue mode you have the frequency of the rate and you've got the skew so essentially that's well how you shape the actual wave shape so that's a combination of uh, slew limitation for both rise and fall in one single knob there and here you've got the amount of momentum and here you've got the amount of skew then as well so that being said let's go into the red mode again patch this into that but may, might be more make more sense if I just show you what this function actually looks like, because then we've got a point of reference. So this is the, there you go. Let's start that. So this is what we're working with. So let's, uh, I would say, let's zoom in a bit. So we have a better view of what we're working with. There you go. So again, a pretty normal gate signal. So if I then patch that into inertia, there you go. Grab the outputs, and I'm not going to get the output straight into that. So I'm going to grab the first order output and patch that in and patch that into the second there as well. So what I also want to do is I also want to use this to drive a VCA. So I'm just going to 
patch that in there and from a for a sound source what i'm going to be using is i'm just going to grab the the saw output of the orna so in patch that into the fifth sect so we can do something with it there you go and then patch that into my output so nothing special there so what we can then do is we can start playing with the actual shape so I'm just gonna well reduce the rate of well rise and as you can see we are smoothing out the the rise part of this shape and if I then do the same for fall I can even create almost something that's a uh, a constant value there but if I'm just do it like something like this you can start to see how you can use this to uh, create beautiful well envelopes or anything else you might want to do with this because this is of course essentially slew limiting what we can then do is we can also add some rise momentum so we're going to add momentum to the upward motion so and again consider the conservation of momentum you're going to expect that the force that the rate is applying will not be enough to keep it within bounds so it's actually going to overshoot There you go. And we can do the same thing for the fall momentum. Let's keep it at the middle. If we then reduce this slightly. We can actually start to design something that already resembles an ADSR envelope, right? Nice, right? Just by using these physical concepts and then capturing that in a Eurorack module, you can do these things. Well, this is of course the, the first order output, just so we have seen the second order output as well. As you'll see, this is much smoother. But it still has the same base shape, you might say, but the 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 actual edges are not as well as explicit and on as on the first order output so that's just fun right so if we then switch from blue, from red to blue let's turn these down again um, let that be in the middle if we increase the well the rate all the way to the to the right we have the exact same gate signal there, but if we then reduce the rate, we'll start to see that same shape appearing. So if we then add momentum, oh sorry, let, before we do that, let's talk about skew there. So we can skew it to the left, or we can skew it to the right, and you can immediately see what that means for the actual shape so that's 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 just perfect and we can do the same thing for the momentum so we're just going to add momentum to the actual behavior so it's just going to overshoot that so if you have it in the middle it's just going to add it to both the the rise and the fall and you can then of course skew that more to the rise or more to the fall. So essentially you can do the exact same thing but the well, the controls are different. Everything that I'm doing with these controls is of course also something that you can do with CV. 
I'm not going to do that in this video, but I think that the, the concept is quite clear there. So what we'll then do is let's see how we can use this in a more real world application. So what I'm going to do is I'm just instead of just using, well, <laughs> Pam's new workout as a source for gates, I'm actually going to patch this into Hermit and I'm then going to grab the well, the gate output of Hermit and I'm just going to grab the full productive out there as well. So if we then start this Oh, I might need to increase the BPM there. So there you go. So zoom in a bit so we can see the actual shapes a bit better and we can still just play with this right So beautiful envelopes that you can use and well let's instead of just using this in the well in the inputs let's use this as a trigger so now we are not taking the actual gate information into consideration we're only looking at that initial trigger and we can then design the whole envelope with nothing more than just inertia so if we increase the actual frequency that's of course gonna make the well the actual shape too short so we're, we're we're looking for something that looks a bit like this and we can then just add a bit more momentum to it but not too much maybe we want to skew this a bit That's great. So how do we then use the Volt Proactive? Well, happy you asked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this real quickly. So we're gonna grab this one from there. So let's see. So what we actually get now is we get the actual Volt Proactive information from Hermit. What I'm then going to do is I'm just going to repatch this. So I'm just going to patch the that one to here because the, the beautiful thing is, well, before we do that, let's talk a bit more about well self oscillation because essentially, and this is of course already a, 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 a good introduction to what we're going to be talking about next. And that's of course using this as a filter. But before that, let's have a look at the actual wave shapes that we get if we don't patch anything in there. So I'm just gonna disconnect this first one for now so we don't have anything dis distracting us. So if we look at what we have here, I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna turn everything all the way up. So the frequency all the way up, the fall all the way up. Hey, there we go. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen self-oscillation so right now this is an LFO mode of course and you can hear how it's opening up the the VCA that's of course that's of course grand but if we then also take and this is what I'm going to do now is instead of using the owner 
I'm just going to grab the input from that and I'm not going to use that VCO. I'm just going to say, well, what you're going to get is just the gate information from Hermit. So what we need to do is we need to increase the actual frequency. So let's switch this to high frequency mode and listen to something that we can already hear. So right now we are patching this into there. So let's zoom in. So that's the actual frequency that we have. So that's nice. But if we then grab the actual, what did I say, the actual full proactive information from Hermit, so I'm just going to patch this in again. So let's zoom out again. So that's the full proactive information, and we're now going to also patch the full proactive information to this. <laughs> so what we have here is a self-oscillating um, well, function generator. And if you then combine that with the knowledge that we have both slew limitation and we've got something that can cause this to self-oscillate. That sounds like something that we might expect a well a, a low pass filter to do, right? So next what I want to do, well that, that, let's just listen to this because it's quite a it's a nice sound that this generates, even though the well the envelope we're using right now is just the gate information. So I might just say, let's grab this and create another envelope to make it a bit nicer. Because it's always important to make sure that we have something that's nice. Not too bad, right? Yeah. So, enough of that. What I then want to do is let's just disconnect this for now. And let's just grab something else entirely. So let's grab uh, what kind of wave shape should we be working with. So let's grab, da -da -da -da. let's grab the saw wave or the ramp wave I might say from the owner so this is the actual shape that we have and if you then look at the actual well we don't see anything yet but if I output this to in this case the fifth effect so my mixer for now you already see that this has a very nice spectrum to work with um, you immediately recognize the the shapes on both um, oscilloscopes both on the on the scope and on the um, on the oscilloscope that we combined with this but how about if we then say well instead of using this let's just disconnect that for now and I'm just going to use this as an input for the in there so we're right now we're in the frequency mode let me just put this where we want it to be so we're we don't have anything self oscillating because the the LEDs for the outputs are, are off for now. But let's patch in this there. And you already see that the, well, the shapes are the same. But if I then also make sure that we are able to listen to this, we still have the exact same shape there. But if I then reduce the frequency, you'll see how we are eating away the higher frequencies in the spectrum. And we are, and if I zoom in a bit more to the red, there you go. We are actually turning this into, let's see if we can do something here. 
there you go where we only have the the base frequency left so if I turn this all the way down well we still have them there but this is essentially with this here you go this is a high-pass filter so what we can then also do is say well okay that's that's all grand but if we have a low pass filter where you can see the frequencies being eaten away let's keep it at this point what about we then introduce some momentum and keep in mind that the momentum is also the 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 the, the actual well <laughs> property that made this self-oscillating so if we then increase this you'll start to see some additional harmonics appearing okay so this is quite extreme resonance that we apply to our low pass filter I love this let's do it a bit more gradual there you go and we can even take this to the extreme so this is of course something truly make this thing wail and that's something I, I, I truly love about this and of course right now I'm just playing with the with the frequency and the momentum but if we switch this to red mode where we actually get even more control over the actual shape that we're creating so let's so again this is what we're starting with so let's then introduce some skew on the rise that introduce some skew on the on the fall so these combined will of course be the actual color frequency that we are working with but if we then also say well on the momentum let's add some to the rise part and go all the way like that and we can also do that for the fall Beautiful, right? And that's just one module, and I still think that there is so much more to do with this. Um, other applications, you can use this to divide your LFO. You can do all sorts of things, and I, I've only I'm only scratching the surface here. Um, so, like any iceberg, there is more beneath the water uh, than I'm just seeing right now, and. I think that you can take a lot of all of the the patches that were designed for for any well for any function generator and you're able to use that with the inertia uh, but of course the the fine grain control that you have here makes it extremely special and I truly love the well the physics approach to this of course um, and I'm quite sure that I won't be alone in that um, so that being said well of course we're already way over time but um, <laughs> that's what happens when you're having fun right so uh, let's go back to the studio wrap this up and um, yeah I'm just gonna play along with this for a bit talk to you in a bit cheers so I truly hope you enjoyed this video on inertia by new systems instruments as you might have guessed I truly like this module it is well, it's right up to par with uh, the other modules I've seen from newer systems instruments like the HSO, 
the harmonic shift oscillator and Babel. And I believe that, well, New Systems Instruments is one of those really up and coming Eurorack makers who make truly interesting modules. So I can strongly recommend everyone to pick at least one of them up and give them a chance. So if you're looking into getting your hands on a complex function generator, or if you want to extend your current setup with function generators, give this one a try as well. Um, other than that, I would like to say, well, everyone, thanks again for joining this video. I truly appreciate it. If you do want to help out this channel, please have a look at the uh, affiliate links below. Consider becoming a patron or just uh, buy me a cup of coffee. For now, I would say, well, please, everyone, stay safe, stay healthy. See you next time. Cheers.